fired ballistic missiles from inside Iran at U.S. military facilities inside Iraq, specifically the U.S. military base in western Iraq. There's no information about casualties. Of course, those U.S. military bases targets in Iraq. That is where President Trump ordered to carry out that deadly strike on Iran's top commander. I want to bring your foreign correspondent, Ian Panel, following this breaking news. He's live in Iraq for us tonight. And Ian, you were telling us that you actually uh, heard something not long ago. Yeah, that's right. This was about 5.45 Eastern time, uh, local time. It was much later in the evening. We heard two distinct explosions uh, in the vicinity of Erbil in northern Iraq. But as you say, we're getting those reports that there have been multiple strikes on a base in western Iraq. Now, the main base in that part of the country is the Ain Assad base. It's home to a large number of U.S. troops as well as Iraqi troops. The IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Command, has also announced through Iranian state TV that it has conducted an operation. That news still coming in right now. And of course, Ian, that particular military facility uh, on heightened alert, uh, as we knew that Iran was threatening retaliation, and Iran had indicated that perhaps these retaliatory strikes would occur at U.S. military facilities. Yes, that's right. And we've also seen a repositioning of U.S. forces. For example, Al Balad base, which is north of Baghdad, south of here. We heard earlier this evening that a number of U.S. troops had relocated away from that base. So there has been a large-scale repositioning of U.S. forces. They've been settling in, trying to defend themselves. But this shows that the threats that have been coming from Iran, if these reports turn out to be accurate, and that certainly seems to be the case right now, it shows that Iran was true to its word. The question now is how will the the U.S. retaliate to what will be seen as a major, pro major provocation by Iran. Of course, for those of you joining us right now, Ian, thank you. We'll come back to you just as soon as you know more. For those of you joining us for World News tonight, uh, at this hour, we have just learned U.S. officials uh, telling ABC News that Iran has kept its promise to retaliate after that deadly drone strike on Iran's top commander, saying that Iran has fired ballistic missiles from inside Iran into Iraq into U.S. military facilities, uh, particularly that U.S. military base in western Iraq. We do not know if there was, in fact, more than one target. This information coming in just as we were coming on the air tonight. I do want to bring in our chief global affairs correspondent, Martha Raddatz. She is live in Tehran tonight because, Martha, you conducted an interview with Iran's foreign minister just today who said the U.S. will pay for its act of war. He certainly did. Javid Zarif told me just hours ago that they would take action against the United States. He said Iran is very patient. We will do it at a time and place of our choosing. So this has been very rapid if this does indeed turn out to be true. He said he would hit uh, targets, U.S. targets, where it hurt the most. I asked him what he meant about uh, 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 by that. He said they would not hit civilian targets. I said, does that mean you will hit military targets? He said that's what the military wants to do, but we will determine that at a future date. But again, here in Tehran, they are confirming that missiles were launched, the IRGC. I also asked him about the threat of an all-out war. He said that is up to the United States and how they respond to any retaliatory attack from Iran. David. Again, Martha Raditz, who's live in Tehran for us tonight. Martha interviewing the foreign minister of Iran earlier today. And you heard Martha report there. She asked if the Iranian regime was at all concerned about an all-out war and the foreign minister telling Martha that that would depend on how the U.S. Uh, responds to any retaliation from Iran, which now we know as we're on the air tonight has in fact happened. Images right now of President Trump earlier today, he forcefully defended his order to carry out that strike, saying the Iranian general was planning, quote, a very big attack and that the deadly strike, quote, saved a lot of lives. But the president did not reveal any evidence about that imminent attack that he and the administration have pointed to as justification for the strike. And as more U.S. troops land in the Middle East tonight, President Trump saying the U.S. will stay in Iraq after the Iraqi parliament voted to force out the U.S. and after a letter from the U.S. military was sent to the Iraqis saying the U.S. was in fact leaving. The Pentagon now saying that letter was in fact a mistake. The president indicating late today that the Americans would stay in Iraq. Although developments now showing that Iran is now striking U.S. facilities, in one in particular, according to a U.S. official in western Iraq tonight. I do want to get to our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, monitoring late-breaking developments from the White House tonight. John, any response from the White House yet?
No response yet, David, but the president today reiterated his threat to respond to any Iranian attacks with overwhelming attacks on behalf of the United States. He did back away from his threat to target Iranian cultural sites, but not to go after Iran if Iran were to strike the United States. This came on a day when he offered uh, more explanations for the more explanations, but no new evidence uh, behind his reasoning for attacking for the attack that took out Qasem Soleimani. Faced with mounting demands for evidence that Qasem Soleimani posed an imminent threat, the president today defended his decision to order the attack that killed the Iranian general. What can you tell us about what you knew prior to ordering the attack? Well, number one, I knew the past. His past was horrible. He was a terrorist. They were planning something, and uh, you're going to be hearing about it, or at least uh, various people in Congress are going to be hearing about it tomorrow. We had tremendous information. We've been following him for a long time, and we followed his path for those three days, and they were not good stops. We didn't like where he was stopping. They were not good stops. We saved a lot of lives. But the president also suggested Soleimani was killed in part to retaliate for an earlier attack that killed an American contractor. Ours was a an attack based on what they did. We weren't the first one out. And this is the U.S. prepared for an Iranian attack. We're prepared. We're totally prepared. And likewise, we're prepared to attack if we have to as retribution. But the president backed off his threat to strike Iranian cultural sites, something his own advisors acknowledged would be considered a war crime. And you know what? If that's what the law is, I, w I like to obey the law. But think of it. They kill our people. They blow up our people. Then we have to be very gentle with their cultural institutions. But I'm OK with it. It's OK with me. The strike that killed Soleimani took place in Iraq, sparking outrage there and prompting the Iraqi parliament to vote to expel U.S. troops. Yesterday, the U.S. military sparked confusion by sending the Iraqi government a letter announcing that American troops would be pulling out. The Pentagon insists the letter was a mistake, a draft never meant to be sent out. Asked about it today, the president deferred to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. What was said yesterday, I didn't know about. I really don't know about it. What is that, Mike? What exactly was that? I just know that there was a, a draft letter that was sent A draft out unsigned. And the president said the Iraqis don't actually want the U.S. troops to withdraw. If we leave, that would mean that uh, Iran would have a much bigger foothold, and the people of Iraq do not want to see Iran running the, company, that, the country. That I can tell you. Of course, at a major concern, what would happen in Iraq, but the secondary concern at this point, because of what we have learned just as we came on the air with World News tonight uh, at 6.30 here, John Carl, as you know, Al-Assad Air Base in western uh, Iraq in Anbar province has been struck at this point by Iran. These are uh, ballistic missiles that came from Iran, and Iranian TV is reporting at this hour tens of missiles uh, were launched at the base. No confirmation from U.S. officials at this point, just how many have in fact landed, uh, have have struck their targets and of course you stand by for any word from the White House and John as all of this was playing out I know the so-called gang of eight leaders from both the Democratic Party and the Republicans uh, getting briefed on the intelligence the president has pointed to that the administration has pointed to as a reason for taking out Iran's top commander David, this was a classified briefing just for the congressional leadership, bipartisan congressional leadership. Tomorrow, uh, the administration will brief the full House and the full Senate on the intelligence that led the president to order that strike that killed Qasem Soleimani. But we are now five days after that strike, and still none of that information uh, has been released to the public. And, John, from your reporting uh, inside the White House today and that press availability with the president late today, was there any indication that the administration sensed that retaliation was in fact coming and this quickly from Iran. Uh, none at all, David, although you heard the president say, asked directly uh, about what he would do, that the United States is prepared, uh, and he reiterated his threat to respond to any uh, Iranian retaliation to, for, to new American retaliation. But I saw no indication here at the White House that they thought that this would be coming so quickly. And for those viewers who are watching us, military families, I, I understand that there is a great concern tonight. So I do want to get back to Ian Panel, who's inside Iraq, because we now know more about the air base that 
that was targeted. It's Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq in Anbar. And we know that uh, thousands more U.S. troops are headed to the Middle East as part of this escalating crisis with Iran. And what more do we know about uh, U.S. presence at that base and whether or not there had been any movement beforehand based on these threats from Iran that there would be retaliation? Uh, yeah, that's right, David. We believe that the 3,500 extra troops were uh, flown into the region. This is primarily into Kuwait to try and bolster U.S. defensive positions. But you're right, Ain Assad is one of the key bases. In fact, when the president ordered the uh, withdrawal of some troops from Syria, Ain Assad was one of the places where some of those troops went. So there are a significant number of them. This is a key air base in western Iraq. As you say, the Iranians have been very clear that they've targeted it. Uh, U.S. officials have confirmed to ABC News that an air base or that a base has been uh, has come under attack. They also said that Erbil, where we are in northern Iraq, uh, was also attacked by Iranian missiles. Now we heard two explosions. This was at about 5:45 Eastern time this evening. In the last 10 minutes since we've been on air, we heard the sound of yet another explosion. We're hearing the sound of helicopters up in the air. So this is a rapidly developing and dangerous situation here in Iraq. And the question everyone will now. Be be asking is how does the United States respond to this and if that is in fact the case that would be perhaps a second week confirmation of that but as you pointed out Ian you heard the uh, activity in the air above you the helicopters there just as I was coming back to you moments ago so we'll come back to you just as soon as you know more I want to bring in Colonel Stephen Ganyard a military analyst for ABC News and Colonel Ganyard uh, we've been saying for days now uh, that US military bases could very well be the likely targets Iran had uh, sign uh, signified that 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 could actually happen and it would appear they've uh, kept their promise tonight it does, David. If you look at uh, the kinds of weapons that they might have used here, these would have been intermediate range or medium range surface to surface ballistic missiles. They're not very accurate. Notice that the Al Assad Air Base is way out in western Iraq, and it's a big air base, not a lot of troops there. It's a big logistical base. So we have two possibilities here. Either they hit something that's U.S. and they do damage, and then the U.S. will feel like they're going to have to retaliate, and then we get into a sort of a blow for blow account. There's also the possibilities, looking at where the missiles we know have landed as of now, that the Iranians may have shot into empty desert or a place where they really wouldn't have had a chance to hurt U.S. forces. So they could say they retaliated, but really didn't hurt anything, and maybe the situation escalates or de-escalates from there. So we've got a real range, and we're going to have to wait until we see what kind of damage and casualty reports we get from Iraq. Well, let's, of course, hope for a best-case scenario in a dire situation. Colonel Ganyard, uh, stick with us for our breaking coverage here. I want to get back to Martha uh, Raditz, who has new reporting uh, in from the Iranians tonight, and we've been monitoring Iranian television, Martha, as we came on the air tonight, and they were uh, clearly uh, eager to report that a number of ballistic missiles have been fired from Iran into Iraq. In fact, the numbers that they have put up on Iranian state television are greater than what we've learned from U.S. officials as of now, but what are the Iranians saying tonight? What, what the Iranians are saying, according to the IRGC, is that this morning, and it's very early in the morning here, courageous fighters of the IRGC's Air Force launched a successful operation called Operation Martyr Soleimani with the code Auzara by firing tens of ground-to-ground -ground missiles at the base of the terrorist and invasive U.S. forces. And Zarif today, the foreign minister, did tell me that as soon as Iran made a retaliatory attack, they would tell the world. They would claim credit for it. It would not be through proxies, David. And Martha, we should point out that this action was taken uh, mere hours after uh, millions took to the streets in Iran and after part of the funeral procession that we witnessed in the last 24 hours was actually halted because of a deadly stampede. The, the sheer number of people who turned out uh, to honor Iran's top commander. They had three days of mourning here. There was a stampede today because the body was taken back to Soleimani's hometown. More than 50 people reported dead in that stampede. But there is so much emotion, as we have talked about, David. So much grief here, but so much anger. People calling for revenge over and over again. And that is something the Iranian officials had to balance, Zarif had to balance, the military had to balance to appease the population for the loss of Soleimani, but not 
push it too far. They don't want an all-out war either, no matter what they're saying here and saying that the U.S. Uh, committed an act of war and an act of terrorism and that they...